Hello there, and of course, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, or Happy Kwanzaa, if you're celebrating at all. And welcome to a report on Northern Irish politics of the week. The Department of Health in Northern Ireland is once again highlighting the vital importance of boosting the immunity against COVID-19 and influenza. Immunity can wane over time, which is why booster jabs are needed for those who are most vulnerable to infection from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Vaccination against flu is recommended each year because the circulating strain of the influenza virus changes from year to year. Those eligible for the flu vaccine include preschool children aged 2 to 4 and all children attending school up to year 12, while frontline health workers are eligible to get both the COVID and flu jabs free of charge. People under 50 who are at particular risk from COVID-19 and flu are also being encouraged to boost their immunity through taking up the offer of vaccination. The Department of Health has also announced the opening of two specialist clinics to help reduce the time for cancer diagnosis and improve patient outcomes. The Rapid Diagnosis Centers, or RDCs, the first of their kind in Northern Ireland, are being launched at uh, White Abbey Hospital and Dungannon South Tyrone Hospital. The clinics are providing a new pathway for cancer treatment and are key part of the department's 10-year cancer strategy published in March. As part of a pilot program, GPs in the Armour and Dungannon and East Antrim areas are now able to refer patients into the RDCs. The centers will receive referrals for patients with non-specific but concerning symptoms, which may lead to a diagnosis of cancer, but which do not meet the criteria of other red flag cancer pathways. Over the coming year, the sites will expand to accept referrals from GPs across the whole of Northern Ireland. They aim to reduce the time to diagnosis and improve overall patient experience. Patients referred to the RDCs will receive coordinated examination and investigations based on their needs in a one-stop environment with rapid reporting of results. With the consent of the patient, the RDC clinician will make an onward referral to the appropriate specialty for all patients who require further investigation or treatment. Almost 6,000 patients at highest risk from the effects of COVID-19 have received groundbreaking treatments in Northern Ireland's outpatient COVID-19 treatment services or OCTs in the last 12 months. The treatments involve the use of antivirals and monoclonal antibodies, which can be administered either via tablets or capsules that can be taken at home or through a drip in the patient's arm. It's just an infusion. Since December last year, some 5,900 eligible patients at highest risk of harm from the COVID-19 in the community have received treatments, which previously would only have been available to people who were hospitalized with the virus. Antivirals and other treatments provide a necessary additional line of defense for those who are at the highest risk of becoming seriously ill with COVID infection. It is strongly recommended that everyone who may be eligible for COVID-19 treatment should stay alert to the symptoms of COVID-19 and get rapid lateral flow tests to keep at home in case they develop symptoms. Further information, including on who is eligible, testing advice, how to report results and how to access treatment, is available on the Northern Ireland Direct Treatments for Coronavirus webpage. Chief Veterinary Officer for Northern Ireland, Dr. Robert Huey, has announced that the avian influenza surveillance zones in uh, County Fermanagh have now been lifted and movement restrictions removed. However, the chief veterinary officer has reiterated that avian influenza is still a real and present threat to Northern Ireland's industry. It is imperative that we don't get complacent with the lifting of these surveillance zones. The risk of an avian influenza incursion into poultry flocks in Northern Ireland is still present, and I am urging all bird keepers, particularly over the holiday period, 
to critically review biosecurity measures, remain vigilant and report any signs of disease to the department immediately, he said. The demand for antibiotics for the treatment of Group A streptococcus infection remains at an exceptional level. To put this in context, it is estimated that around one month's worth of stock based on normal demand was exhausted in less than 48 hours last week. While demand is well in excess of what is usual for this time of the year, the system has been working hard to replenish stocks as quickly as possible. As such, wholesalers are still receiving and making deliveries with more scheduled over the coming days. Wholesalers are carefully managing the volumes available to them to ensure that supplies are available to those in greatest need. The increase in demand for antibiotics is being seen across the UK and the Department of Health and Social Care, the DHSC, who have led responsibility for continuity of medicine supply on a UK-wide basis, are working closely with manufacturers and wholesalers to expedite resupply deliveries to secure continuity of supply. The supply chain has responded positively to this unprecedented surge in demand, with suppliers increasing manufacturing capacity and fast-tracking delivery of ingredients required for production. Locally, community pharmacies, wholesalers and procurement teams have been working tirelessly to secure stock deliveries into Northern Ireland. The department acknowledges the immense efforts from all involved. The chief pharmaceutical officer has updated pharmacy teams on the current situation and to ask what pharmacy teams work with prescribers to understand local antibiotic availability and refrain from ordering excessive quantities to avoid putting the supply chain under additional pressure. Advice to HSC clinicians on the management of the current supply issues, including signposting to use of alternatives as necessary, has also been issued. The Chief Pharmaceutical Officer and Department of Health colleagues will continue to liaise closely with DJSSC with regard to the UK-wide supply chain, ensuring that Northern Ireland's supply needs are fully understood. The latest Northern Ireland Economic Trade Statistics, formerly known as Broad Economic Sales and Export Statistics, which measures both the sales and purchases of goods and services by Northern Ireland businesses in the non-financial business sectors, were published last week by the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency, NISRA. Total sales were worth £77.1 billion in 2021. Total value of external sales increased by 14.5%, and Ireland remains their single largest export market. Sales within Northern Ireland increased by 13.2%. Sales of goods increased by 13.8% and represented two-thirds of total sales. The purchases of goods increased by 13.6% and represented four-fifths of total purchases. Sales of services increased by 13.3% and represented one-third of total sales, and the purchases of services remained static and represented one-fifth of total purchases. The economic output statistics were published last week, as I said, by the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency, the NISRA. I talked about the services sector before, but I have to talk about it as a whole. And there it increased by 0.1% in real terms over the third quarter of 2022 and increased by 0.4% over the year. So we are in this year now. The production sector output increased by 0.5% over the third quarter and by 1.9% over the year. Retail output in Northern Ireland saw a quarterly decrease of 1.7% in quarter three and a decrease of 5.3% over the year. When comparing current output with the pre coronas pandemic level seen in quarter four of 2019, Northern Ireland production output is 5.6% above its pre-pandemic level and Northern Ireland service output is 4.8% above its pre-pandemic level. In contrast, Northern Ireland retail output remains 6.2% below the pre-pandemic level seen in the fourth quarter of 2019. 
The Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, or DARA, has announced publication of the Farm Business Data 22 Farm Planning Handbook. The handbook provides a useful guide to budgets for all the crop and livestock enterprises commonly found in Northern Ireland. There is also a section on farm support schemes, which details the operation of selected schemes such as the basic payment scheme. A range of useful information in the miscellaneous section includes a summary of nitrates and uh, phosphorus regulations. It also includes details on taxation, fixed costs, machinery, machinery costs, higher charges, contractors' charges, Konaka rents, and key DARA contact points. Farm Business Data 2022 is a valuable source of information for farmers, their professional advisors, those undertaking formal training in agriculture, or anyone who requires planning and budgetary data relating to farming in Northern Ireland. The role of the handbook is to provide a comprehensive and authoritative source of physical and financial information that is tailored to farm planning needs in Northern Ireland. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.